So good evening, everyone, and a very happy new year to all of you. And today's topic in our Ask the Expert series is time management. You know why? Because every year, at the beginning of the year, we always have so many resolutions that I want to, you know, like start jogging in the morning, early in the morning, or I want to do something for the charity. I want to do this. I want to do that. There are so many things, you know, like on a platter and we keep on thinking. But end of the year, what happens is how many of that we are actually achieving. So it's very important in our life that we have to really, you know, of course, we all believe that time is the most important factor in anyone's life. But many a times we don't know how to manage our times, what to give priorities, which are, you know, setting goals. We have n number of dreams, but end of the day, you know, like we are just so tired of doing our daily quotes. So that's where we thought, why not, you know, invite somebody who is the guru of, you know, you can say who's teaching all across the globe. And he is so closely associated with Parisar Asha as a trustee. So I uh, warmly welcome Hansel to uh, this New Year's new program as the expert series. So Hansel, this is a, let me just introduce uh, him uh, in a nutshell, that he is an adjunct professor at SP Gen School of Global Management. And he is also a visiting professor at various uh, prestigious management institutes. He's a corporate coach and uh, luckily because of lockdown, we can find him, you know, like uh, in Mumbai. Otherwise, he had been traveling all across the globe. So whenever as a trustee, even when we have to ask him or, you know, like call him, we have to think, OK, now he's in which time zone. He also heads a brand consultancy and has helped to build 30 prestigious brands. And he has been always like a, you know, mentor to Parisar Asha. And whenever I also get stuck, so first call goes to Hansel. And let me tell you, I mean, I take this opportunity to thank all my trustees because Parisar Asha has been so, so very lucky touch wood that, you know, all these trustees are working for Parisar Asha selflessly. And you hardly get, you know, you hardly get to see any institution like that who are so blessed to have really wonderful people. So thank you so much, Hansel, for being always there for Parisarasha. And along with, uh, you know, Hansel's other credential, very important thing is he's also a social activist. If all of you, you remember Juhu Hamara, this is something I think is Hansel's baby. And he has been, you know, the founder and also the main person behind this Juhu Hamara event which happens every year so i don't know about this year i mean what uh, what are the plans because all events are going virtual and that's how even parisarasha is also going virtual for our annual summit so uh, anyways uh, talking about environment or talking about any other social cause hansel is the first one to you know like run over there to help them out and i'm sure his wife is also there somewhere you know like joined us today i'm sure she must be having a lot of you know like uh, uh, not issues i won't say issues but yeah complaints definitely is uh, but i'm sure she's also uh, very much proud of hansel and i don't know how you manage all these things hansel uh, you know in 24 hours everybody gets 24 hours so that's how i thought that to give him that topic of time management because along with doing all these activities if evening if you call him he's somewhere riding his bicycle so this is his daily activity and he is a fitness freak. So whenever he gives us so many tips, you know, like to Parisarasha team and especially to me to remain fit. So thank you so much, Hansel, for being there for Parisarasha and for the entire team. So now uh, let me, you know, ask you this question. Like when I actually uh, sent out this invite to everyone about this uh, Ask the Expert series, many of them, they said, oh, yeah, 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 this is the, you know, like the most uh, needed uh, question of the hour, you know, like how to manage our time. We want to do so many things, but time is or there are others you know like who don't get time at all so actually time is such a tricky thing you know like in anyone's life so here i would like to you know start on a very poetic note uh, written by javed akhtar sahab he is also a very close friend of hansel's so i thought let let's you know like start with his uh, a beautiful you know uh, written uh, poem so uh, let me just read it out it's in hindi i hope everybody understands hindi so he's talking about what because we have you know like written so many poems songs and so many things about time and what so this is what he is talking about ye waqt kya hai ye kya hai aakhir ki jo 
मुसलल से गुजर रहा है ये जब न गुजरा था तब कहा था कहीं तो होगा गुजर गया है तो अब कहा है कहीं तो होगा कहा से आया किधर गया है ये कब से कब तक का सिलसिला है ये वक्त है क्या वक्त को हम बांध सकते हैं सो लेट सी आई डोंट नो हाउ टू मैनेज दिस टाइम हाउ टू यू नो लाइक गेट होल्ड ऑफ दिस टाइम बिकॉज वी रियली डोंट नो हाउ मच टाइम वी हैव ऑन दिस प्लानिट we can't give guarantee at all so that's how whatever is there in this moment i think we should start living to our fullest and now we will you know like come back to you hansel to ask you ki why this time management has become such a big buzz nowadays you know it's a buzz word so over to you hansel well thank you arti thank you for that wonderful introduction and i'll try and live up to that introduction <laughs> yeah to begin with uh, there's one thing i'm obsessed with and that is making the most use of what i have but i have got good news for your participants and i have got bad news for your participants so i'll start with the bad news first so that we can get the bad news out of the way well the bad news is time doesn't exist there is no such thing as time we are all living in a state of timelessness we attempt to measure this timelessness and we have invented something called time which actually doesn't exist because as javed akhtar sahab very correctly said you cannot track i mean we managed to track a couple of million trillion years and now we are counting in light years but even those light years are just up to our galaxy we haven't yet counted those unlimited galaxies that exist and we'll have to find a new unit of time to count those as well but then that's besides the point the point is time was invented by man and he invented time as a measure as a unit of measure so if you're talking of time management how can you manage something that doesn't exist <laughs> okay so uh, but, but then we have to close this session correct. here correct so that's that's a bad news for you now I, I, let me come to the good news okay. so trying to manage time is like saying you know uh, my waistline is about 38 now 40 i want to manage uh, manage it so i'll manage the tip instead of counting it in inches i'll 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 extend that inch by another uh, 25% and now my waist has become 30 fantastic you know i i am happy with myself so managing time is like managing the tape the good news is instead of managing the tape you manage your waist and then you see how things happen so instead of managing time you manage yourself and manage what you do within the time and you know time can stretch and you can do so much more than what you're actually doing in your day to begin with uh let me say this i i travel across as you as you rightly mentioned uh, every month i'm in a different country doing lectures and i meet people from different cultures even sitting now in my classroom my virtual classroom i have people from china from korea from portugal from all over the place and i've noticed one thing and i have to say this Uh, and pardon me i i apologize in advance if i am hurting anyone's feelings but we indians have probably one of the worst appreciations of this concept of time correct and i tell you why it's 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 very simple you know uh, you call a meeting and people will inevitably be late and they'll tell you hey, you know the traffic in mumbai i mean come on how can you not know about the traffic in mumbai where do you live on another planet Or, well, you know, I mean, ah, uh, well, we always have an excuse. Ansel, yeah. let me tell you, this is like you know, this reason is also applicable for online. I mean, I am really surprised why people are late on online now. They give okay, there is no network, there is Wi-Fi issue. No, it's not. <laughs> so, uh, we in India, we have a, it's a cultural construct. I call it a cultural construct. Let me let me explain this to you very simply. and this is very interesting because we must understand why we are like this not just say we are like this only all right there is a reason why we are like this so kada can you just give me that uh, screen share so i can just show them a little picture sure sir yeah okay so when you go to the west time is called a timeline all right so it's a line you were born while well, you grew up you go to school 
Ah, uh, you go to school, you 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 graduate from high school, you find a girlfriend, you go, you find a job, you get married, you go back to college, you go back, you work, you make money, and then you retire, and then you travel the world, and then well, you die. Life ends, and it's a line. But in India, time is not a line. Time is a circle. All right. Now, how does that work? Uh, in India, we 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 have constructed a different kind of uh, model for time. Uh, Sukunda, can I have you given me the share screen? Ah, you have. There we have. Uh, so let me show you what time looks like in India. Uh, in India, uh, this is how time looks. We have divided it into months and days and years. So we have, like, you just wish me a happy New Year. That happy New Year was invented by Pope Gregory. Actually, he is the guy who 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 invented this calendar, which we all celebrate with so much gusto. And in a few I think in a few days from now we'll be wishing people in uh, for Lori. Is Lori a happy New Year or Baisakhi or something? Anyway, so every second month we have a New Year in India. All right. So we've got so many New Years within a year because that's our system. The years are divided into yugs and the yug into a manavantra that is you know a, a, an evolutionary kind of a period, and then we have a mayug and a kalp. So all this thing goes into creating our concept of time. So in India. You ask somebody, "Are yar, bhul gaya. Aaj so kal, kya farak penda hai yar? Ki farak penda hai? We'll do it tomorrow. Kal ne to next week. Theek hai. Next week ne to next month. Are yar, saath janam baagi hai. What is your problem and what is your hurry and where do you want to go? Peace, chill, aaram se. I will do it when I feel like doing it. And this is our notion of time." Incidentally, it's a very good idea actually because you know we're all in a rush to get somewhere, and nobody really knows where that somewhere is. But having said that, uh, well, that's that's the bad news part of it. The good news part of it is, if you learn what to do with your time and you learn how to optimize your effort with time, you can do a lot, lot more in this one lifetime, much more than anyone can even guess. And for that, you need to understand. Little a simple thing. Let's do a simple exercise. All right, I'm going to ask your participants. Arthi, you told me they're all in education and things, so I'm sure they have a pen and a paper with them. All right. Let's see if you can draw a box. Just draw a box, a rectangular box, divided by half and another half, and into three parts. So you've got a six by four box. All right. Now, you see the Americans. They've got a fantastic way of doing things with these with these figures. Right. And uh, what you've just done is something that what is something that Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla, does. Of course, he has someone to do it for him because he has got so many aides and assistants. And uh, Bill Gates, this is what he did all his life, and it's called time boxing. And when I looked at it, I said, "Hey, this is just like my school timetable. That's what we did all the time in school, didn't we?" But what you got to do is just figure out a little bit about our own time. Uh, once you've drawn this box, now while I'm talking, I'm sure most of you have already drawn that box. I want you to start in the very first box and put the hour at which you wake up, and that hour could be an approximation. You don't have to put seven minutes and fifteen seconds when the when the alarm rings and I put it on snooze and I wake up ten minutes after that, so I have seven minutes and twenty-five seconds and I put it on snooze and another ten minutes. <laughs> don't worry about all those details. Let's say you say uh, seven o'clock. And you wake up at seven forty-five. Make it eight o'clock. Just round it off to the nearest hour. All right. Now, if you look at this, this is your day, and this is what it looks like. Now, what I'm going to ask you to do is, all of us normally work a nine-to-five job, and I'm sure you're going to say, "Hey, what can I do about time? Because my time really doesn't belong to me. It belongs to my boss. It belongs to my organization." It belongs to my school. It belongs to my college. It belongs to whoever has employed me. So it's not my time. But don't worry, you put it down. Mark out nine to five, and those are your work hours. You take an hour to commute to work. So that's eight o'clock. Say one hour, eight to nine. You you travel to work, and then you take an hour to travel back home. So six to seven. That's another hour commute. So what do you really have? And then you sleep. I assume ten hour, uh, eight hours a day, ten to six. If you don't sleep eight hours a day, my honest advice to you is, please 
sleep eight hours a day. Because if you don't, if you don't sleep eight hours a day, the remaining 16 hours are an absolute waste of time. You will be performing at half that potential. You'll be performing uh, half asleep. You'll be performing with a lot of uh, whatever, you know, disease. So eight hours is sleep. Now, if you really look at this time box that you have with you, you got two things to do in life. One is work and optimize your time at work. And I'll talk about that in a moment. And the second is what I like to call me time or my time. And that is the only time you have to build yourself. Seven o'clock in the morning till eight o'clock, one hour, and seven, eight, and nine. If you really look closely at this, you realize that, oh my gosh, there's hardly any time for me to really live because I've given eight hours of my day to my company, to my organization, to my school, and I don't own that eight hours because I get paid for it and they take it away from me. And they make the most of those eight hours. And I can do nothing about it except grumble, which I do most of the time. But yeah, there's nothing I can do about it. And those eight hours that I sleep, there's nothing I can do about it because my body needs that rest. I go to sleep. The only thing I can do, do with is these four hours. And somehow, these four hours are probably the most precious hours of your life. These are the hours that build you, that make you what you are keep you long and healthy, that give you disease or give you health, that give you fitness or give you fatness, that give you uh, misery or give you happiness. Your entire life depends on these four hours. And yet, and yet, just look what we do with them. But when I meet my students nowadays, I say, this is, I have no time. I have no time. You have no time, yes. What do you do with the time that you have? I don't have time. So whatever little time I have, well, I've got to check my messages on the WhatsApp. I've got to check my, my, my cell phone, my, uh, we play games, you know, PUBG, you know, well, all those games they play on, 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 uh, on their computers, on their laptops, on their cell phones. And then, of course, we chat. And uh, if you look at all the time that goes down the drain, because we don't optimize the time that we have in hand. So what do successful people do? Well, believe you me, Bill Gates, Tim Cook, Elon Musk, all of them have a time box just like you've just drawn. The only difference is what those guys do is their time box, and I was shocked to know this, are in units of five minutes. And they have, a, they have an aide or an assistant whose only job is to fill in those boxes with things that Elon Musk wants to do, needs to do during his day. And he moves from box to box. Should you do that? Sorry, I don't think you should do that. That's a very bad idea. Because if you do that, well, you be so, so tired and you go crazy. And of course, you'll do what Bill Gates did. Bill Gates, you all know him, the world's richest man. Pretty successful. We all, well, if you're the world's richest man, you've got to be successful. So normally what we do is look at successful people and say, look at that guy. Fantastic. I wish I could be the richest man in the world. Think again. Why would somebody spend 60 years of his life filling in time boxes, making money, and becoming the richest man in the world, and then stop and decide to give all the wealth he made in 60 years to charity. Two, two weeks ago, it appeared in the newspapers. Bill Gates is totally worth 198 billion, with a B, billion dollars. He has left 10 million to each of his children. And the rest, now you, I think he has three children. You can subtract 30 million from 198 billion is going to be given away to charity. Now, the question I ask is, why would a man spend 60 years of his life 
accumulating wealth and then spend the rest of his life giving it all away? Million dollar question. So you see, it's not about the money you make in life. And now you know why. When Aarti started with that introduction, sometimes I feel very sheepish about all the foolish things I've done in my life, like going out and trying to save Juhu Beach and going filing cases against the government in court and doing kind, you know, all kinds of stuff. And I wonder, why did I do that? When I could be spending that time making money for myself. And then I realized that, well, I would have been rich, but I would have died. I would have been the richest man in the cemetery. Well, that's no fun. That's no fun, right? I mean, because if, if you actually look at life and you look at what life is and you talk to the richest people in your life, let's say, this is one picture I put up because I said, you know, this guy, I'm a great fan of his. I'm a great fan of him because, you know, if you read his biography, uh, it's amazing. A chap born to a single mother, well, who was a college, a teen, unwed mother. So she gave him away for adoption. Even his adoptive parents didn't want him because uh, his parents didn't have high school education. The guy founded his own company in his garage and within three years, he got sacked from his own company. Now, you know, that's the strangest thing I've ever heard in my lifetime. Imagine forming your own company and your own company sacking you. But, and then they called you back and they said, okay, I'm sorry, 11 years ago, we made a mistake. So can you come back and join your own company back again? And then, you know, the rest is history. But I want to ask you a little question. I don't want to waste time on a poll and things. So I'll just ask, uh, you know, Arti, you know, on the screen that you see, there's a lovely quote there, uh, which says, if today were the last day of your life, what would you want to do about it? And things like that. Steve Jobs, 1955, 2011. Uh, what do you think is the most significant thing on this slide? It's a trick question. And I don't expect you to give me the right answer. So you can just guess. <laughs> what do you yeah, think? I think we have to live, I mean, what I can read, you know, yeah. out of this and uh, understand, uh, I mean, it's my perception towards no. this slide is, you know, we have to live in that uh, awareness that any moment can be your last second. <laughs> well, <laughs> live your life, you know, to the, the most fullest. The yeah. most significant thing in this entire slide is that little dash between two big numbers. You know what yeah. that is? That is what the did. definition yeah. of Steve Jobs' life. Yeah. 1955, the poor man had no control over it. He had absolutely no control. He had no, in fact, his, his mother was an unwed mother who gave him away for adoption. So he was actually abandoned. So 1955, he couldn't change. 2011, he struggled with pancreatic cancer. He managed to extend his life for about five or seven years. But that is something he couldn't change. All he could change and all he could do was manage that blip on the screen. All of us obsessing about ourselves, about how good we look, about how fat we are, how thin we are, how fit we are, how rich we are. Remember, you're just a blip on a screen between two large numbers. <laughs> Very true. And managing time is all about managing that blip. You do that successfully, you will live many years after you die. You will attain immortality. Today, Steve Jobs, he died in 2011. It's 2021. Ten years have passed. But I can bet my bottom dollar I have in my pocket a part of his legacy that you have in your pocket, Aarti. I have in front of me a screen that is a part of his legacy. It's a MacBook Air, which you have in front of yeah. you. And like you and I, millions of people around this world proudly add value to our lives and time and our blips, thanks to the dedication of this one man who dedicated his blip to adding value to our lives. Well, he didn't die the richest man, he never was. And uh, he was, in fact, uh, by his own admission, in his college day, he would go down to the Hare Rama Hare Krishna, the ISKCON temple in the, in, in, in the United States, because they served a free meal on Thursday. And he would go there and sit in that langar to eat the free meal, because he didn't have money, and he was starving for most part of the week. 
And yet, what he has done, I consider him the master of his life. He has battled pancreatic cancer. He has battled all odds. He has battled being sacked from his own company. <laughs> I don't think there could be a greater insult to anybody uh, than that. And yet, he has succeeded in putting a smile on our lips, joy in our hearts, and he will continue doing that through the work he has done in this wonderful lifetime that he has led. Right. So I want you all to take away this, this, this one quote from him. Well, they say, if today was the last year of your life, would you want to do what you're about to do today? I put it, I'll paraphrase that differently. Every night before going to bed, ask yourself, if tomorrow were the last day of my life, what would I like to do with it? What would I like to do with it? Maybe, oh, there's something I need to complete. I need to write my will. Or maybe I need to what, sell my accounts. I need to, I need to, well, I need to just uh, do something that I've always dreamt of doing. Uh, ask yourself every night, if tomorrow were the last day of my life, what is it that I would like to do? And go out and do it. Because every day will be a collection of great dreams that you've achieved and you've always wanted to achieve. So this is what we'll take away from this slide. But let me go back to our time box and we'll come back, visit, revisit this later. I'm going to talk about two things. One, is, one, yeah. one question uh, yeah. now, since you're talking about Steve Jobs, you're talking about Bill Gates, but mm. we as Parisaraja, you know that we are all dealing with uh, our school Correct. education, and especially teachers and who are women, you know, like our uh, teachers, Correct. because we work with primary early years also. So the entire, uh, when we are conducting sessions or when we interact with these teachers, usually what happens, these teachers are really bogged on. They say, Ma Madam, we cannot manage our time. You know, there's so much of administrative work, what we are supposed to do. We have to teach and now it's online. We don't know how to do it. And, you know, and plus you go home or when you are at home, there are so many things which they have to handle. There is no top servant, uh, you know, and so many challenges, especially women, they have to go through in India and all over the world also. So how can you? Because see, Bill so Gates... Let, me give, you, yeah, let me give you... No, no, I was just telling you how they treat time and how we right. treat time. And that's what sets so us apart. Our employees like, you know, teachers can actually... Right. Uh, I use a simple tool that is right here. All right. You see, all of us get caught up storing things in our brain and the human brain was not designed for storage it was designed to process information and take decisions unfortunately we try and store information in our brain instead this is a very simple thing that you must look at again it's a simple matrix that says urgent not urgent important not important and i think every everyone who wants to learn about time management needs two mandatory tools. One is a little book and two is a pen that writes or a pencil. Because I think of all the tools we have, planners and, and do it lists and to-do lists and of all these tools, the most important tool is a pen and a book. And I'll tell you why. Because we tend to store things we want to do, we wish to do, and we dream of doing, and we aspire to do. We store it in our heads and say, you know, today I must do this, and I must do that, and I must do this, and I must do that. And then what happens is as the day begins, we get so caught up with our work, with our routine, with our cooking, with our maid not coming in, with the school, with the corrections, with the exams, with the timetables, and then we are we lost. So... The first thing I'd say is, if you want to use your brain optimally, which you need to do in order to manage time well, then you must first empty your brain. And when you empty your brain and free up that RAM, that is the rap, you know, you know what RAM is in your, in, your, in your laptop, you have two kinds of memory. You've got a hard disk that stores memory you know, permanently, and you've got a RAM that is random access memory that picks out things and processes it and puts it back into the hard disk. Your brain is like RAM. It's limited. It can process data and information. Don't use it to store information. Put it down on a piece of paper. It's a very simple thing to do. I do that myself. And I think that's fun because the moment I've done that, I've already 
de-stressed myself. So this is the little book that I have. Well, and all I do is every, every morning or whenever I, I get to my office and I sit down on my desk, uh, that's all you need to do. Well, write down what you need to do, what's urgent and important, and I need to do now. Cannot wait for another moment. What's not urgent and important, I can do later. What's, not, what's urgent and not important, I can delegate. If you can delegate, for example, if you needed to buy some soap or you need to buy a toothbrush or you need to buy some toothpaste. So it's a very simple task. You have a maid servant, you can always say, hey, listen, on your way to, to, to work, can you please pick up a, 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 my, a toothbrush for me? You've just delegated the job to somebody. And uh, well, you can ask a friend to do it. You can ask your kid to do it. You can ask your child to do it. Can you please do this for me? Uh, but you need to know first what you need, right? So you put that down. And what is not urgent and not important, you just dump. The moment you have done this, you know now what you need to do in your work day. So those blue boxes that you drew, those blue boxes begin to get organized because you know exactly what you're going to do and you know exactly where your attention needs to be during the day. So I say, don't just fill up, put the blue box jobs there, even the white box job, things that you need to do. I need to go to the bank. I need to buy vegetables. I need to do whatever. And whatever is urgent, not urgent, important, not important. And this little matrix, which was incidentally created by the real management guru called Stephen Covey, uh, has really helped organize and simplify my life. And I'm sure it'll help simplify your life as well, because once the day is over, all you need to do is Shut this book, jump onto your cycle, and go for a long ride. Because I don't carry anything in my head. If you stop me on the road and ask me a question about work, about what I'm doing tomorrow, I'll say, sorry. When I get back, I'll peek into my little blue book, and I'll tell you about tomorrow. But right now, I'm busy, very busy, enjoying today. All right. So the moral of the story is, all of us have our aspirations and dreams and things we'd like to do, and we carry them with us. And when we don't achieve it, we, we, we have, you suffer from what I call remorse, regret. And when you think back, you say, and I'm sure most of your participants say, oh my gosh, I forgot I needed to do this. I needed to do that. I forgot. Oh my God, my boss is going to call me up. My supervisors are going to call me up and fire me because I've not yet set the examination paper. And I was supposed to give him these answer booklets by yesterday. And today it's already one day up and I'm going to get fired for it. Well, what you've just done is bought yourself a lot of grief. And that grief has come because you didn't, didn't really prioritize what you needed to do. And you tried to store in your head too many things, including the stuff that you needed to dump. And you went about doing things in whatever came first to your head. And that's why you bought grief for yourself. And now what is life all about? It's about, and you know, uh, let me just uh, tell you what happens when you buy grief for yourself uh, on a daily basis. When you buy remorse, when you get uh, heartburn and when you get, you know, on a regular basis, if this lasts for more than 15 days in a row, it could get into a chronic condition, which psychiatrists today diagnose as depression. A lot of people, especially those working in the education sector, because we are all working against timelines, we are working with timetables, we are working with schedules which are fixed by somebody else and we cannot really keep pace with both our work and our uh, lives, we get into what is known as a depression. And uh, yeah, In fact, Ansel, we get so many cases on our helpline. Yes. So but this you know, Aarti, yeah. this is only the kids. I'm no, talking no. about the teachers. Yeah. No, no, no. Uh, we get uh, adults also. It's not only about teachers. Not about the first about thing. Parents and anybody, you know, like today. And our, uh, in fact, our helpline has been extended for every age group now. 
post covid we had extended to anyone right from senior citizens to you know very small babies yeah. so uh, in fact towards the end of our session we will be flashing our toll free helpline number okay. it's absolutely free service uh, because of uh, capgemini support and we have a counselor psychologist psychiatrist doctors on board so anybody uh, you know like whoever is joined or who are watching us live on facebook feel free to you know uh, use this uh, free service so Sorry, i to interrupt you because i wanted to share you know since enough, you said enough. about depression so yeah. today the biggest problem we face in our information age is depression and people going into states of depression because they can't cope with the challenges and with the pressures of living a modern life now there is an antidote to that and the antidote to depression is what i call a dose a daily dose that you like to have and receive and this is the ideal antidote that works like magic against depression arti just remind me to tell you about the daily dose at the end of this program all yes. right so yes. uh, because i don't want to really interrupt it by digressing so coming back to uh, organizing our time and our day the moment you do this you actually have got rid of a lot of your depression because you begin to now get on top of your time see there are two problems one this time as an employee as a teacher and working for a corporation we don't own that time so there's very little we can do to reorganize it the way we want to do it but if you reorganize your task prioritize your task and you actually put them in perspective using this little device that i gave you you would be able to be the master of your time i'm going to give your audience five simple little things and they're very simple little things that you can do right away to improve your time management if it can be done in 5 minutes do it now you see uh, we like to procrastinate or put off things because we say oh i'll do that tomorrow morning you see the best thing like when you started off uh, in the introduction and you wished everyone a happy new year i had a smile on my face because you know when you talked about new year resolutions uh, that is something that i have been toying with for many many years most of us if not all of us make resolutions right and the resolutions can be as simple as well i want to give up eating sugar i want to stop eating sweets or i want to go for a jog in the morning or i want to i want to read a book or i want to i want to study further or i like to you know um, buy a new something or we all have our resolutions and the funniest part about it is we always always set a time and say you know i'm going to do this first thing from monday and when monday comes something or the other happens so we say oh from the first of next month the first of next month so i can track it monitor it and then you say no first of jan first of jan it's a good day to make resolutions so it's a new year resolution i'm going to wake up in the morning and i'm going to go for a long walk and i'm going to do this every morning from the first of jan and then well the 31st was a long night a bit of a hangover you woke up late and you say ah we are in india we are like this only so not in this janam maybe the next janam we'll take it up and we'll worry about it then and life goes on if you can do something in 5 minutes do it now because procrastination as my father always told me is a thief of time and once you do this you see how you get so many things out of the way because all those little niggles that you had clogging up your little planner that you had will disappear and suddenly you begin to get in the mood you'll warm up to doing things that you want to do live by your calendar and not by your clock you see the clock is a very pressurizing thing so what i like to do is i like to say write down the five most important things you want to achieve this week put that down and then tell yourself all right i'm going to do i've got 5 days in the week maybe i can do one thing per day maybe i'll do three things on the last day two things on this day but the most important things you want to achieve in the week because once you do that you've got your entire week now organized and the final one which is on my bucket list this year and i must confess i have failed and i have not succeeded as yet in joining the 5 am club right and the 5 am club is a wonderful little book written by one of our modern age gurus robin sharma and uh, well i i i happened to read that book last year and uh, well i got very interested in it because 
you know, he he gave me a little calculation. Yes, Aarti, go ahead. I'm, I, you're, yeah, you're so excited. I have, you want to say I, something. I have, because I also, you know, like had that resolution. Finally, I have settled for not 5 a.m. but 5 p.m. <laughs> so, uh, well, I, you know something? I, I discovered a little bit of mathematics in that. Look what happens. I took the same time box and I put it down and I said, supposing I woke up at 5 a.m. And the same 8, 8 a.m. commute, the same 9 to 5 work hours, the same 6 o'clock commute. But suddenly I discovered, well, I, I went to bed one hour earlier and I got the same eight hours of sleep. Everything was fine. But magic. There's a magic. There's a magical thing that happened. You know what happened? I discovered I had five hours of me time. Five hours of me time. And I'll go back to the old one. And here there were just four. I said, hey, this is funny. So I went back and forth and back and forth. I said, I just manufactured an extra hour in my day. And I'm, I'd be, if I joined the 5 a.m. club, I'd be blessed with 25 hours instead of 24 hours in a day. But I scratched my head and thought about it. And I said, no wonder this is fun. So now I'm going to figure out what I'm going to do with that me time because if you just look, and I've not done any, any fiddle with the numbers, huh? please, in case you think I've fiddled across with the numbers, no, I've done nothing. I just put in the same eight hours here. I put in the same two hours of commute and because I don't have control over it and I have got uh, eight hours of sleep. And yet I found that I could spend an hour extra doing better things that I wanted to do with the 5 a.m. club. And uh, well, it's, it's, it's as simple as that. Uh, it's just that you have more time for yourself. You have more time to do the things at a time when the world is asleep, when it's quiet outside. When I go for my morning ride sometimes, I ride from Juhu to Nariman Point and back. It's only 42 kilometers and on a cycle it's fun. In the morning, you can actually hear the birds wake up and you feel so good listening to them wake up and think of yourself and you say, I woke up before they did. Wow, it's a great feeling. And the whole world becomes yours. When you sit down to read, oh my gosh, that silence that you experience, you can literally hear your mind work. You can, you can experience that wonderful moment of silence and quietude, which otherwise is a rarity. We only got it during the COVID lockdown, but otherwise we don't. Now, uh, well, so I think if you, your teachers, if all of you and all of us joined the 5 a.m. club, we'd be a lot richer because we'd be, we'd be doing a lot more with our productive time. You see, 5 to 7 is extremely productive time because the brain has been invigorated. It has been revitalized. It's got eight hours of rest. It is uncluttered. It's, it's totally like, you know, a new feeling, a feeling of a new day. You sit down, there's no one yelling at you, no one asking you for things. Your call doesn't ring. There are no WhatsApp messages and there, are, there is no Gmail because everyone's fast asleep at that hour. And there you are doing the things you want to do that really will let you, make you feel happy. So, uh, a couple of things before I go to the last and I, I have to remember because I've got one eye on the clock. When I'm talking of time management, I've got to manage my time <laughs> myself. So it's 6.46 on my clock and I've got uh, another 14 minutes. If you have a little time, I'll take yeah, a couple I have of questions. questions to ask yeah. also and we'll so, be also opening the right. forum, you know, for others all right. uh, to, ask yeah, to ask. So very quickly, uh, let me tell you a story. All right. And uh, I love stories because... We all love stories. So here was this farmer's dog. All right. Now, every day, this guy wake up in the morning, cars down the road. Now, being a farm, you know, countryside, not too many cars down the road. So one day, the farmer's neighbor asked him, he said, hey, what's up with your dog? Huh? Why does he keep chasing cars? You got nuts or something? The farmer said, see, actually, that's not my problem. 
I don't care why he keeps chasing cars, but what I'm wondering is, what the hell will he do with the car once he catches it? Well, what? So they were confused. They said, quite a stupid dog. Now the, the neighbor's dog overheard the conversation. So she decided, and she was a she dog. Uh, sorry, your teachers will say, I don't even know my gender, but then I'm being politically correct. So she was a she dog and she went up to neighbor's dog, the he dog, you stupid bloke. She was a little jealous, actually, this idiot chasing cars instead of chasing me. Why, why the hell do you chase cars all day? So he smiled and he said, you know, fun. She said, what fun? He said, well, that monster is a hundred times my size, right? It's seven horsepower, right? And yet, every time I catch up with one, you know, it feels great. She said, but what the hell will you do when you catch up with one? This is nothing. I just bark at it and let it get away. She said, why did you chase it in the first place? To feel great. So, you know, the dog was absolutely right. Why did Bill Gates chase that pile of money to make him the richest man in the world? To feel great. And why did Bill Steve Jobs do that? Well, to feel great. And why do you and I do that? Because... Every time we achieve something, have you realized there's a certain feeling in your head, a buzz in your head? Just think of the time that you got your first award or the first prize when you went to school. Think of the time you went up on stage for the first time and you gave a speech. You were seven years old and you were trained to speak and you spoke and then everyone clapped. And when you went home, your parents were so proud of you. Think of the time when your daughter did so well in her studies. She got the fast and flying colors and merit and distinction. You felt so proud. And even now when you're depressed, well, what do you do? You think of your daughter, you think of her achievements and the depression flies out of the window because you just got a dose of dopamine. This is not another magic trick. This is not just another uh, story I'm telling you. This is not just another pep talk. And this is not just another motivational talk. Sorry, this is a biological fact. When we achieve something, even if it is as little as something I wrote in that little matrix that I drew, the brain releases dopamine. And dopamine is a, is a certain hormone that neutralizes the cortisol and the adrenaline that gets secreted when you're depressed and you're unhappy. And that feeling of goodness is an actual biological fact. And if you look at life, all your achievements, whether it was your first fancy dress competition or the first medal you won for, for cricket or maybe, well, Something your father bought you because you, you stood first in class or you got a very high score in your SSE or that degree that you received on your graduation day or that promotion that you got out of turn. Every single one of these events serves to release dopamine. And therefore, when you manage your calendar and when you manage time, every time you achieve something, even if it's one inch off your waist, I can tell you that dopamine lasts a lifetime. And it feels great. So think about time management as a collection of dopamine. Because that little blip that I showed you on that Steve Jobs slide was nothing but a daily dose. A daily dose of four things. Now you're wondering what the daily dose stands for? D stands for the dopamine you get. When you achieve these little, little things uh, which come off your your to-do list that come off your matrix that you achieve in life when your boss says fantastic you did a great job and we are right on time but how many times has your boss said that to you all right number two the o is the oxytocin that's the the love hormone we get when we cuddle a pet when you cuddle a child when we just walk up to somebody and say hey you're a fantastic guy you know i mean i really admire you or you walk up to someone and say you're looking good today you look pretty. That's great. Well, that feeling, that, you know, bonding, that kind of happiness is the oxytocin that we all like to have. The little hug, the little kiss, the little caress. Whether you're a child or whether you're a dog. In fact, in Japan, 
they had a fad for some time. They had pet rocks where people would cuddle and kiss and nurture their rocks, inanimate objects, but it released oxytocin in the brain. And that's the O of the dose that you need every day. And the S is the serotonin that you get when you walk out in the sunlight. The body knows that the sunlight's coming. When you eat that meal that's nutritious and you know this thing is going to contribute to my health and fitness, that's the time the serotonin gets released. Those wonderful things that taste good and nutritious and good for you, that's the serotonin, the S. And the, finally, the E. Have you ever gone for a long walk or a jog or a long ride or a hike and then you come back dog tired? Your legs are paining. Your arms are paining. Your whole body is aching. That's a feeling in your head. And you're feeling very good about that ache. That's a very sweet ache or a very sweet pain you get, especially after you went for a picnic and you played cricket, right? And you hadn't done that for decades before. Or, well, when you go out and play football, you get that pain all over your body. When I do a long ride, I remember when I came back, I did a Mumbai to Gujarat and back. Ah, every bone in my body was aching, but... There was a buzz in your head and that is the endorphin that gets released in the brain when you do physical exercise. Life is all about getting your daily dose. Your daily dose of dopamine, of oxytocin, of serotonin and endorphins. And that you get when you manage your calendar. When you receive appreciation for what you've done. When you share that appreciation. When you eat well and you exercise well. You've lived a balanced life. And what I just told you is a very important lesson in work-life balance. You can now look at this calendar and say, the blue squares are where I am going to now plan and optimize my time, and the white squares are where I am going to use in order to build my mind, my body, and my spirit, because that is the only thing that's going to carry me forward, because all that matters in life is that tiny little blip between the start date and the end date, which none of us know when. So with that, Aarti, I'd like to say thank you for having me and I enjoy talking to all of you. I have one question <laughs> for you. Uh, I mean, it was really wonderfully, you know, presented and uh, your daily dose, I'm sure everybody will start taking it from right now only. But uh, I, uh, you know, uh, we deal with parents, we deal with teachers. So how do we inculcate these kind of habits of time management in young children? You know, so because I I'll think uh, Parasarasha believes in catch them young. Yeah. So when you let, put let them right. Tell, right. The human brain has been wired to conserve energy. The human brain is lazy. It is configured that way. It is wired that way. And why it's lazy? Because when we were hunter-gatherers, it was taught to preserve calories and to store them in case there's a famine, in case there's a drought, or in case tomorrow we don't find anything to eat. Now, we have changed, of course, we have evolved. But this has not changed. The only, and I underline the word only, the only way to get a child to adopt these techniques and tricks and things is through a system of reward. When the child experiences dopamine, you see, that's the time he wants to do that again and again, because every time he does it and he gets a reward, he gets, he feels so good about it that he likes to repeat that behavior. Unfortunately, unfortunately, I repeat this, unfortunately, in our Indian education system, we don't think it is important enough or good enough to reward our children for what they do. We're quick to criticize them and we're very quick to punish them, to penalize them, to pull them up, to, 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 to scold them. But we're very slow to reward them. And what do they want? What does a child ask for a reward? Hey, you're a rock star, kiddo. That's fantastic. My God, look at this painting. It's so beautiful. I think I'm going to put this up on the wall. I'm going to stick this somewhere. Let's make an album and store this painting. It's so great. Oh, my gosh. You got 93 out of 100. That's fantastic. The last time it was just 85. Woo, you're becoming a rock star. I think that's great. I mean, uh, how many times have we really rewarded behavior? If you do this, if teachers do this, if adults do this, you watch 
how children will now begin to respond to all the changes that you want them to bring into their lives. Instead, what we do is we say, again, you're playing that stupid game on your, on your cell phone. Stop it. That's the best way to get him to do it again and again. All right. Because one thing he feels good about is he managed to get under your skin and irritate you. And he couldn't do that officially and legally. So he does that indirectly. All right. Whereas if you can find the antidote in a reward, in a behavior that can be rewarded, you can get not just children, adults, old people, anybody to change behavior. It's all about the reward system. I mean to learn this because this is not just motivational talk. This is biological. And I just told you the daily dose is you can research that on the net. You can ask that to any psychologist or psychiatrist. Who will tell you. These are the happy happiness hormones that all human beings aspire through life. Whether you're a Dhirubhai Ambani or whether you're a simple uh, teacher like me, there is absolutely no difference. We all want those four happiness hormones, a regular dose as often as possible. And that's what makes us happy. So use that with your children and try to reward them with different ways. Appreciation, avoid material reward. I'll give you a hundred rupee note and you can go shopping if I give you, if you do well in studies. That's a stupid way of doing it. You're making them materialistic. Give them rewards like, you know, appreciation, like whatever they want, whatever they like, and things will grow. Yes? Uh, so thank you so much Hansel for this wonderful session now it's your turn to get the dose you know? <laughs> <laughs> yes of so course can you share the screen? yeah all right yeah yeah so I'm you... looking forward to that please yeah I'll yes. just get off the share screen so Sukada can uh, yeah you, Sukada you can have your screen back thank you yeah, Sukada, you can share that. Uh, yeah, just a minute. Post. Thank you, sir. Any questions on the chat? All right. No, just a lot of thank yous there. All right. Super. Yeah, great awakening session. All right. All right. Yeah, so thank you so much, Hansel. It was really, really wonderful. And that one hour of, you know, our daily dose. And this is something for you to, you know, with our gratitude. And it's not only about for today's session, but this is, I'm taking this opportunity, you know, to thank from all of us, from the entire team of Parisarasha for always being there for Parisarasha. Thank you so much. I'm going to put this up on my LinkedIn now and I'm going to yes, share it. Absolutely. Well, absolutely. Uh, so, you know, let my students also see that I get rewarded sometime. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. Feel, how do you feel now? Your dopamine. I feel wonderful. <laughs> my dopamine is right up there because when I see my participants happy and and kind of well, they got some value out of what I gave them. Well, yeah. why not? Let's share happiness. Okay. Yes. Bye, Arti. And yeah. All so the best to all of you. Just check if anybody has any question. Yeah. Do you have some five more minutes? Yeah, uh, yeah, so yeah. I, I have no problem. Yeah. If anybody would like to interact with Hansel, they can, you know, switch on their mics and they can switch on their videos also, and you can talk to Hansel. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Okay. So five a.m. club. Me, jo apne one hour ka. हां जी 5am क्लब के हिसाब से जो इन्होंने 1 घंटा बचाने की जो है टाइम बताया था क्या उसको फिर से एक्सप्लेन कर सकते हैं वेल इट्स लाइक दिस द सेविंग ऑफ 1 आवर या या बाय चेंजिंग इन अकॉर्डेंस विद द 5am क्लब यू सी यू सी व्हाट हैपेंस कैन यू शो दैट चार्ट व्हेन वी वेक अगेन और एक्सप्लेन मी या आई विल एक्सप्लेन दिस टू यू सी वी नेवर गेट टाइम राइट थ्रू हाउ हाउ इट इज पॉसिबल या वी नेवर गेट कैन यू रिपीट दिस स्ट्रेच वेल you see, you've got five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nine. What happens is normally we go to bed pretty late, right? So here, what we have done is you count the numbers. You got it in front of you. You see this one, there are five. Is there any number repeated anywhere? No, right? It's perfectly fine. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three, four. Right. All, all you've done is one, two, three, four. Six, well, that's nine hours there, nine to five, and that's one, two, three. You want eight, us to seven, share the screen? Uh, yeah, Hansel? oh, no, no, one minute. I'm just. Uh, Sir, we can't see the screen. Okay. Yeah, we can't see the screen. Yeah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Yeah. 
All right. So, uh, what happens? Uh, okay, don't worry about it. I'll explain to Mukesh. You see, normally, kya hota hai, Mukesh sahab? When you sleep, okay. you would, when you sleep hmm. late, you would wake up late, right? But when you wake up early, you will sleep one hour earlier, but you will wake up at five o'clock. So, the amount of time that you sleep will okay. be less than what okay. you actually need through the 5 a.m. club. Because you try it out, you won't sleep below before 9 o'clock at night. But that extra hour will give you an extra because you slept one hour less. Okay. So, okay. simple. It's a simple thing. And it works Thank you. like Thank magic. You. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yes, Thank you. Arthur. Thank you very much. Nice having you. Thank you, Artemis. Thank you. Thank you, Anshat sir. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sukada, so please show our helpline number. Oh, yes. It's great how to reduce uh, gaming addictions. Oh, fantastic. Uh, what you can do is, uh, you know, probably take your child for a jog or a walk on a Saturday morning or on Sunday morning when they have a weekend off. And then you see how they become uh, people of the 5 a.m. club, right? Yeah. Anyone else? Mm, yeah. Oh, yeah. Greater in, uh, huh. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kaushik. It was nice having you on. Yeah. This is an old friend. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye, Aarti. I won't take more of your time. Yeah. I think everyone's got uh, okay. no questions. Uh, All right. So okay. if anybody has any questions for Hansel, you can contact Parisar Asha. He is part <laughs> of Parisar Asha. Oh, yes. So we, we will leave Hansel sure. with their questions. So sure. Hansel has all the answers. You know, let me tell you <laughs> that uh, he has having versatile personality, Any whether it's politics, whether it is fitness or whether it is anything in the world. He has, he knows about everything. Thank so, you. Really, Thank I you don't so know much. how to manage your time. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is Thanks, our number. Yeah. yeah, so it's morning 9 till night, 9 o'clock, all days it's open, our lines are open. We have our counsellors so who will be answering your queries and if required, there are Zoom sessions and there are, you know, you can also come to Parisarasha Centre when there is any, uh, you know, little serious problems so that also we can help you out in that. So thank you so much all